This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. I'd like to call the Board of Fire Commission meeting for Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023 to order. I'll ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So I'd like to ask for the approval of the minutes from uh, the Board of Fire Commission meeting held on June 27, 2023. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Any Aye. question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Chief's report. Good evening. We'll start off with uh, alarms like we normally do. Just make one quick note here. So we have not met uh, for a couple of months now. So June 27th was the last time that I have us meeting. We did not meet the month of July. So this is a, the, the next time that we're met. So regarding our alarms, uh, last year at this time, we were at 3,343. Uh, at this time, we're at 3,070. Since our last meeting, we provided ALS interceptor transport 19 different times. We've had 34 incident responses to the highway. We've had 174 incidents in which just an ambulance responded with no fire resources. And we've had 338 incidents during which time there were multiple incidents occurring. So that covers our alarms. Regarding the budget, uh, I want to cover last year, if I can, please. So we closed last year at 99.5%. As we always do with town meetings, there's a there's a couple of lines that exceeded the $20,000 threshold. And so they're going to be brought up in a, in a town meeting in the next couple of months, whenever that meeting is scheduled for. So I wanted to bring the commission aware to what some of those lines were. Uh, the consultant line was uh, exceed $35,000, and that's because of the additional consultant that, that the department brought on board. Uh, the medical supply line exceeded $25,000, and that's simply just because the cost of medical supplies had gone up so much. The contractual replacement staffing line was up $212,000. And so those are the three lines that I would anticipate being at that town meeting in terms of $20,000 or more being spent on uh, over on each line. Again, the overall fire department budget, meaning that we made up for those overtures elsewhere in the budget, we we're still at 99.5%. Uh, one thing to keep in mind regarding the, the larger line that kind of jumps out at you there, the $212,000 line, is the fact that uh, we are underspent $204,000 in the full-time personnel line. Can you give me that number one more time? Sure. Actually, do one better. I'll, I'll provide the paperwork. Oh, that is that would help. perfect. Right. So that's going to depict what we had for last year, each of the budget lines. So we, for contractual, we're down two hundred twelve thousand, but we were two hundred four thousand plus were unspent. Correct. On payroll. Yep. Which is a direct correlation because if you're, you know, we had to pay overtime for vacancies and we didn't fill vacancies, which is why that line is under. So, so it's an $8,000 differential. Yeah. I mean, pretty good for a guesstimate, you know, consider, well, considering okay. yeah. proposed year. There's, there's always things that come up that are not anticipated that you cannot budget or plan for. That's yeah. just, especially with the personnel line, we, we never know how many people are going to be out injured, out long term sick, uh, that kind of a thing. So. So really, in terms of staffing, the amount over is not close to that because you've made it up in, right. in the other Correct. line. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's just still one of those things. I expect those lines to appear at the town meeting. And if they do, I wanted you to have some awareness to it. Yeah. But again, the overall budget uh, for the fire department was, was just under. Uh, this is how it's looking for this year. 
And so regarding the budget for this year, that's going out to you now. I apologize, I was not able to provide this to you in advance. I, as you know, I was on vacation up until uh, yesterday. And we don't normally have an August meeting, so. Yeah. So uh, running through period one, which brings us to the end of July. I can't really run the end of August. It's still a little too early for that. But through the end of July uh, last year, we are at 10.8. Uh, as we sit here today, uh, I'm sorry, as at the end of July of this year, we're at 10.4%. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's worth noting with regard to the period one for July of this fiscal year versus period one for July of last fiscal year is again, going back to that contractual replacement staffing line. As of the end of July last year, out of that contractual replacement staffing line, we had already spent $70,000 last fiscal year. This fiscal year, through the end of July, we spent 35,000. So to me, that's a direct reflection of the overstaffing that we're doing on some shifts that are driving down the overtime. Can and that's exactly what you committed. It's exactly what we talked about. Can you repeat that one more time? Sure. So last July, through the end, through the fiscal year, first period last year, so it would be the end of July, we had spent already by the end of July, $70,000 in overtime in okay. contractual place of staffing line. Period one this fiscal year, so July 1 and July 31st, 2023, we had spent only 35,000. Okay. So again, I, I just think that highlights those, even though right now we're only at two of the four shifts that were, that were essentially staffing one plus, um, it's, it's certainly having an impact on the contractual plate, the staffing line as we anticipated that it would. So the, so the thought would be with the extra firefighter on staff, if one firefighter called out or was on vacation or sick, we still have a sufficient number of firefighters for the shift. We, one let, we have one that's not a, a counting towards minimum. We didn't have that last year. Correct. Right. So there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not this would truly have an impact or not. July and August are the best months to look at because they're our highest overtime months, obviously, you know, for summertime. Sure, you're looking at July, August, and you're looking at December. Uh, Correct. Holidays, yep. Right? So, yep. As it's always been. Uh, this is, uh, that, that's very positive in, in my mind. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you for, uh, and I know you're scurried around to put all these numbers together. Yeah, that's all right. In one day. Um, I'm going to finish up the budget real fast. So, the uh, fire fees collected since last meeting is just over uh, $85,000. I was able to close out what we collected for last fiscal year. So last fiscal year, uh, my numbers total $670,000, uh, just over $670,000. And we had projected 500. Uh, this fiscal year, we're at 83,152. And again, we've projected the 500. I don't know where we are with paramedic billing. I have not been provided any income numbers from finance in terms of where that line is going to close last fiscal year or where we're at this fiscal year. I've not been provided that. Um, quick question about the budget that you just handed out for this year so far. The total, there says total EMT, it says 101% spent already. What's, that's what because that that's about? a stipend that's paid out in the month of July. Okay. So that's, gonna, that's a one-time thing and it's done for the year. Okay. A couple of items that are still driving the budget numbers though, as we sit here this fiscal year, is I've had one member out on sick leave since April 28th, and he is not due back for some time still, and I continue to have a member on military leave. So those two right there are gonna continue to drive at that contractual plate staffing line. The member on military leave that was, he was supposed to be discharged from the military, was he not? The end of this year. The end of this year. So that covers it for budget. Are there any questions regarding budget or call stats? If not, I'll move on to fire marshal's office. Can I just do one more? Sorry. Yes, and sure. I think this, I think I know what the answer to this is. The, I just want to make sure in case somebody asks. Um, the line item on total vehicle 
uh, maintenance and repair. Mm -hmm. It says 52% spent, but that's because it looks like there are 73,000 encumbrances. Is that has that money actually been spent or is that because this is this fiscal year yeah you're looking at yeah it's page four or is it page page four, four. It's just 20 percent spent right or no 52 no, percent total vehicle it says it says it has year to date yeah. and then it has seventy three thousand encumbrance yeah, I'll look at that. I'm not sure what's driving that encumbrance up right now. Take a okay. look at it, figure it out. The, the report that you see isn't a detailed report, so I'd have to look at it. Okay. Yep. Any other questions regarding uh, this year's budget? Okay, no, we'll move on. Uh, Chief uh, Correspondence. Uh, correspondence, I have a couple. I have a uh, resignation letter from a volunteer. Chairman, if you can pass it out. I have a uh, thank you letter. Again, I always certainly uh, try to highlight handwritten letters because you just don't get them anymore. So a handwritten letter from a citizen thanking us. Uh, and then I was sent a uh, notification regarding uh, former fire commissioner uh, Bill Mitchell is going to be the recipient of an award. And that is through the Sons and Daughter of Italy. And the event is September 28th at 5.30. And I can certainly pass that along as well for all of your collective awareness. And that's all that I have for correspondence. Thank you. Has any other commissioners received any correspondence? I, I, I certainly have uh, communicated with uh, Bill Mitchell's son, Brian. Uh, he's hopeful that uh, uh, commissioners and, and past commissioners will uh, be able to attend. Uh, the tickets are, are um, I want to say they're $50 a ticket. I think that's what it is. Um, and the event will take place on Thursday, September 28th at 5.30 to 9.30 at Woodwinds. So um, uh, if, uh, if any of you are interested in attending, please let me know. Uh, I'll pass that along to you as well. Bill, as you know, was chairman of the Fire Commission. He was the second select person, and he's been very actively involved in the town of North Haven for many, many years, especially in the, in the, in the baseball arena in town for you. Quick question about correspondence. So I don't remember whether I saw this on uh, the website or Facebook page, but there is, there is something that is uh, an email address through North Haven that's supposed to go to the fire commissioners. Mm -hmm. where, where does that go, do we know? It goes to me and I forward it to the chairman or to whoever it's asked. Okay, so you actually get it. Okay. Yes. Oh, did you get my yeah. test? No. No, I guess that's maybe it doesn't anymore, well, but it yes. did for the I longest time. When did you send that? Yesterday. Yesterday? Okay. I will check and see from Alex what's going on with that then, but okay. it should be. Uh, yep. Chief, with the resignation, how many volunteers do we have now? Uh, it didn't change much. <laughs> We're still sitting at uh, between 15 and 20. And I don't see the. Um, line item on the budget for recruiting you used to have it in years past. it's in there it's towards the very bottom it's probably half spent now because half that goes towards uh some gym memberships you see it on the bottom now towards the last page probably yeah. Yeah. 30%. yeah um on that just because we're, we're covering it one of the things that we're gonna that i just ordered was uh 2000 door hangers Sounds kind of old school, but we're going to go door to door to 2,000 different residences in town, uh, knock on the door and ask if they're interested in becoming a volunteer. And if they're not home, we're going to leave door hangers on the doors. So uh, one of the expenses that came out of that line was ordering those materials. So uh, working with a group of volunteers now to try to pull that off the next over the fall before it gets too cold. Is it going to every door? 2,000. Yep. There's about 9,700 households in North Haven, so we'll cover roughly 20%. So they're not looking at students in high school? No, the way we see it is it's word of mouth. So yeah. Um, yeah. it's really hard to get demographics for addresses. So we're just going to probably just canvas certain neighborhoods, keep track of where we went by street, and, uh, and see how effective it is. 
Well, it's another effort to try. We're and, doing all that we can. We really are. To grow our rank. It's a, it's certainly, it's a difficult task. And it's not only North Haven, it's, it's certainly around the state and the country. Yep. So, uh, you know, I, I commend you on, on thinking about another way of getting the word out to try and bring volunteers on board. Uh, that's for sure. Um, old business for the fire department. Uh, old business, I had a couple of things. Uh, we anticipate two new engines to be delivered March of 2024. Remember that this order was placed in May of 2021. I had referenced last month that we had removed a 1987 Pierce engine from service because for safety concerns, I could just no longer keep that in service. Uh, so what I wanted to do was, was take an opportunity and bring the commission up to speed on where we are with our apparatus right now. Chairman, if you could pass that out. So what this is gonna show you is, uh, again, we because we have to change engine numbers so often, and it seems like some people actually do listen to what the engine numbers are in town, and yes. um, it's those engine numbers can be reassigned based on the needs of the department. So. We started going to what we call LSN numbers. So it's lifetime service numbers. So what you'll see is we're gonna reference the year that it was purchased and uh, the number of apparatus that were purchased in that year. So for the most part, you're gonna see 20-01, 14-01. So that means that the apparatus was purchased in 2020 and it was uh, the one that was purchased. There's one on there where we actually had two apparatus delivered in the same year. So you'll see a 20-01 and a 20-02. So that number is going to stay with the apparatus indefinitely. No matter what we call it internally, that number stays with the apparatus. And it just makes it better, a little more um, concurrent for record keeping and so forth moving on. And so what I wanted to draw your attention to was the left side of the page I handed out is the engines that we have. And then on the right side, you'll see the aerials and the rescues. So the two engines I have circled there uh, the 2000 and the 1994 are the two engines that we anticipate replacing when these two new engines arrive. Something could change last minute, catastrophic to something else, and, and it may change things. But at this point in time, uh, this is our plan. But this does give you a pretty good idea of where we are with our apparatus, the overall age and the health of our apparatus. Uh, you can see that as we sit here today, uh, even with these two new engines that we have coming in, we're still gonna have an engine that's 19 years old. And so we have to start looking at how to replace that. We have a rescue that's 16 years, I'm sorry, a rescue that's 10 years old and a second lard that's 16 years old. So there needs to be plans in place for how to replace this apparatus. Uh, one of the things I wanna just bring your attention to is the lead time right now on apparatus. So not only is the price on the apparatus increasing every year, but the, the delay in the delivery of the apparatus and the time that the order is placed is really, really creeping up. Uh, right now we're looking at three and a half to four years. So when you look at an engine that's 19 years old, if you were to place an order today, it's gonna to be 23 years old by the time that we get a new engine in for it. So I, unfortunately this town has taking the practice of waiting till things break to replace things. And I, I'm really concerned about if we continue with that practice moving forward, we're gonna find ourselves in trouble because uh, the lead time of three and a half to four years in apparatus now is nothing we've ever experienced before. So I provided an email that I had correspondence with with a vendor when, in which I was asking how long it takes for apparatus to come in. And that just kind of shows you uh, what we're looking at. The last piece of um, paperwork that I want to draw your attention to is being handed out now. So one of the things that I know the commissioners has have asked me a lot is what's in service, what's not in service. Um, I'm providing to you now a, a calendar so that you can see how many moving parts there really are. So you'll see those same corresponding LSN numbers on the left-hand side. The green means it was in service. The pink means it was out of service that day. And so you can go month by month since March and you can see how often we have apparatus out of service. If you look at the months of April and May, 
we had four apparatus out of service out of this list I gave you. And so we really have to shuffle and move things around quite often in order to keep fire stations having engines in them. And I want you to think the other thing about every time that we move things around is most of our apparatus, um, half of our apparatus is still very small compared to the apparatus we're ordering today. So we can't fit a lot of items that we carry today on the apparatus that's 15 years or older. It, it just doesn't fit. There's no compartment space for it. And if it does fit, quite honestly, it's probably not safe to have it in the compartment because it's not secure. There's no brackets holding tools in and holding things against the, uh, the inside walls. And so I just think this, this really drives a point home in terms of the amount of apparatus we have that are out of service at any given time and how much it changes day to day. So I really would ask the commission to, to review this and certainly ask me any questions you might have uh, tonight or, or next month. But I'm a little concerned that the apparatus is taking as long as it is to come in. Uh, I've advocated for the $300,000 that is put aside right now in the budget for the purchase of the apparatus. I've advocated for that to go toward a bonding meeting to purchase these apparatus. Because right now, the way we have these two apparatus set up to purchase is $300,000 every year for about the next five years. We only usually get about $300,000 worth of capital, any department in town. About $300,000 capital is about all that we, we ever see. If that's all gonna be put towards apparatus for the next five years, we're not gonna be able to purchase anything else. And we're not doing anything to try to get ahead of a three and a half to four year lead time for apparatus. Um, I don't know that we'll be successful in getting on the bonding meeting for the, the purchase of these apparatus, um, but I, I do think that we need to look at this closely the next couple of years. There's other capital needs that I have over the next five years besides apparatus. If you look at my capital budget from this past year, we need things like SCBAs. We need to start replacing uh, radios. We need to start looking at uh, life packs, extrication equipment, um, there's other things that we're going to need in the next five years that if all we're going to get is a $300,000 towards the, the lease of these apparatus, the financing of this apparatus, we're not only kicking the can further down the road for all the other equipment we need in the next five years, um, but we're making it harder and harder to get ahead of the curve for our apparatus. So is it just one vendor that you're dealing with for the apparatus? Predominantly, and the reason why is uh, that vendor, you, you wanna try to have your fleet of apparatus as much as you can, the same manufacturer, because then it helps with parts, it helps you're always dealing with the same vendor, um, and it, it just makes things a lot easier. This department mostly had all Pierce apparatus up until about 10, 10 12 years ago. Almost our entire fleet was Pierce. Unfortunately, uh, Pierce was no longer competitive for us to look at. We started going towards Sutphin, and we've, we've stuck with Sutphin now the last several purchases. And where is the location? Uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania. So they're two? But they have, obviously, they're nationwide, so they have uh, vendors that work on the fleet uh, locally. How many um, vendors are there? How many? Fire yeah. apparatus vendors? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's, there's probably a dozen but it, throughout the, the country. But you're really narrowed to which ones have service garages, service technicians uh, in the, the tri-state area. Uh, we've got a, a few different ones, but something it might be three and a half to four years, but they're all like that right now. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a, a sense of like, sometimes when you know, you've know you been with a particular vendor, um, I know there are vendors that my company uses and there's only a handful for us to choose right. from. So that makes, a difference when you know when you're looking at you know if you had 50 vendors to choose from it's very different than if you have yeah we really so that's, that's we have four to six really okay. to choose from at any given time and some are priced very very high and some are are things i don't think we should be considering okay chief um talk about the three hundred thousand dollar request to bond uh versus including it in our our um, our budget for um, capital. Uh, what kind of discussions have you had with uh, Rich Monaco and Mike Feeder regarding this? Yeah, they're putting together the bonding agenda now 
for, for what's going to take place in a couple of months. So whether or not we make it for this year or maybe we make it for the following year, at some point, the balance of what we owe for these two apparatus, which is really the almost the entire purchase price, I'm going to say roughly 1.5 million for two apparatus. Uh, at this point, the decision has been made to put $300,000 aside every year as if you're financing it for the next five years, roughly. Um, and that's where I'm very concerned is that for the next five years to take our capital and put it just towards the purchase of these two apparatus and not get anything else that we need for the next five years is going to really hurt us. I'm so, sorry, Pat. Uh, I just, quick um, questions to follow up on that. What gets people on the bond? Is that, that does that right. come from us or does that come from you or is it a combination? I think it comes from finance. Board of Finance. Well, they they decide, but I mean, in terms of uh, you know, a, the, a way for them there to be an awareness. I wonder if there is you know, we should put something together and send it to them. You know, I have no objection to uh, uh, putting together a, a request to the Board of Finance uh, to uh, you know uh, take that three hundred thousand dollars and add it to the uh, bonding package rather than. Uh, uh, taking it out of our capital. Uh, I think what you're capital. asking though is that they're going to be the bond in the bonding meeting. They're going to take the total price the towards right. the, the apparate, apparatus 5, and bond it as opposed to three hundred thousand to three hundred thousand and keep the three hundred thousand for us for capital yes. in our in, in each budget or subsequent budget. Yeah, which or, you can't plan for, but just knowing that. You don't have three hundred thousand dollars already spoken for, and right. you're, you're probably not going to get anything above and beyond that. Of course, of course, right. Well, it makes a world of sense to me that we make that request to the board of finance. I mean, Pat, you were on the board of finance and, and received requests from other uh, boards and commissions regarding bonding packages. It's to suggestions. Be suggestions. Okay. Um, it, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. No. Okay. So, uh, with your permission, we'll draw up um, uh, a letter uh, to the uh, Board of Finance Chair uh, requesting that the, um, the bonding uh, committee uh, take into consideration the 1.5, is it, Chief? Uh, yeah, the purchase of the two apparatus. The purchase of the two apparatus and the bonding package. Um, one, one other question, is since we're, we're going that direction, this other, um, in terms of other needs, uh, is that something we should be trying to request? Well, the, the correspondence I, I provided to you from the vendor, uh, you don't need any money down to place an order. So perhaps that's just a, a vote that needs to take place, whether it be here and Board of Finance or, or just Board of Finance or whatever. But, you know, again, this, this very clearly says three and a half to four years for delivery. Yeah. And, and not only that, but the, the price is going to go up probably 8 to 10% a year. So not only is it going to cost you more if you wait three to four years, uh, you know, operationally we're going to be hurting as well. So uh, perhaps that's something that the commission can discuss, including in a letter. I don't know, but I'm, it's, it's my job to bring it to you for yeah. awareness. I, I do think that, um, not necessarily for the letter to the Board of Finance, but I think if, if we're wanting to look at... Um, you know, trying to purchase uh, apparatus that we should be voting on it because it just gives, you know, gives the Board of Finance the idea that we've looked at it, we've examined it, and there's been another board commission that's actually looked at it before it, went, it goes to them. I absolutely agree. And, and reading this letter, uh, it appears if we put some kind of a down payment, uh, even though we don't have to, uh, there potentially would be a um, 1.5% uh, discount. Um, you know, off of the uh, off of the purchase. Now that's evaluated each week. Is uh, this that's in the uh, let's see the second paragraph there. So I don't know what that dollar figure is to put down. Yeah. But um, I think considering it's going to take three and a half to four four and a half years, yeah. it, it would make a, a, a world of sense. So, um, Pat, uh, Jen, I'll turn to Pat. Um, do, when when does the bonding meeting actually happen? Do you know? Because we don't know. October. I think it's October. And when do they put the agenda together for it? I don't know. Don't know. And I wonder when it goes to the board of finance. I, I 
Well, it's a bit of change since I was on the board. I'm just wondering in terms of a motion tonight, I just don't know what it would be. So, so yeah, and, and, and to your point, uh, Jen, so would your suggestion be if we did uh, uh, have a motion tonight, would be to replace the two engines, the 29 and uh, the 29 and 23 year old would be replaced with the two engines that are on the water now. Uh, well, right? I don't, I don't know. Assuming, 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 assuming nothing else nothing catastrophic else happens. Right, right. right. But then you've got the 19 year old and four and a half years later, we've got now a 16 year old. Uh, well, right, that's just it. Add, add four years right. to every one of those numbers. And yeah. you know, if we talk about $300,000 being put aside every year towards for capital, uh, how are we buying a new rescue? Because I've got a rescue now that's 10 years old. Absolutely. And that's another 175,000 sure. or 200,000. Right, 000. and you've got a ladder truck that in four years is gonna be 20 years old. And there's um, another... we, we've got to start getting ahead of this and the time to do that is now when you start talking about a four year delivery time. So I, 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 again, to Jen's point, if we're going to make a motion tonight um, to um, uh, replace two apparatus, what would your suggestion be? I mean, considering we've got a 16 year old ladder truck and we've got a 19 year old engine. So that, that would be a 20 and a half year old ladder truck and you know, a, a, a 23, 24 year old engine. Yeah. So would it be your recommendation? I, I think you just say, um, I, I think that you, you position a letter where you ask for the purchase price of the two apparatus that are already ordered to be bonded, the purchase price to be bonded, in that the uh, Board of Finance supports the purchase of another apparatus and, and allow the deputy chiefs and I to kind of talk and figure out if we're looking at a ladder truck or if we're looking at an engine. I understand we can't get both right now, um, but again, as, as you pointed out, Chairman, you're, you're, as we sit here today, you have a ladder truck that is 16 years old and, a ladder, and an engine that's 19 years old. Um, in, in four years from now, we need to start, th those are going to be um, at the point they need to be repaired right. or replaced rather. So, so uh, you so can look at the time they've been out of service. Yeah, sure. that's what I was going to say. Yep. You look at the time that's been out of service, uh, you look at uh, the aerial truck. Mm -hmm. um, where are we? Well, it's been out of service a whole month of August. The so whole month far. of August, right. And it went out of service uh, July 10th. It's been out of service since. So, I mean, it's costing us a ton of money for repairs and it's out of service. It's costing us money for repairs. You know, sometimes some of these things, they're not even necessarily a lot of money. It's just as these apparatus get older and older, yeah. the ability to get parts becomes harder and harder. And so therefore the, the, the downtime for this apparatus is increased. You look at truck one, it's been in April and May, the whole- the Well, whole don't time. forget that was also an accident. Yes, but then you have engine three, <clears throat> Yep. Uh, engine three has been out for two months, uh, April and May. Yep. For two full months, and engine three here, uh, let's see, it, it, it's been out of service for basically two and a half months. Yep. Um, this is what we deal with, with, with a I fleet mean, that's, that's in the teens and 20 years old, 20 plus years old. This is, this is the struggle we have. I, I've come here every month for the last, I don't know how many years and saw how, how short we are in apparatus. And I, I finally, you know, just, it was a moment we had kind of discussion, uh, you know, at a high level about trying to put together this visual for you so that you can see it. Um, it's, it's every day. Well, I certainly would entertain a motion uh, that um, our commission um, make to replace um, to certainly to bond the two apparatus that are already on order and to order a new apparatus based on the suggestion of the chief and deputy chief, considering it's going to take four and a half years, three and a half to four, four and a half years before we're able to take deliver. So, um, so, so would someone make that motion? Yeah. I, I, mean, I can't make it as a chair. We can't. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we um, request that that at the bond hearing that we um, take the purchase prices from the two engines um, and put them in bonding and um, make a request for a purchase of 
one new piece of apparatus based on that chief's recommendations. Do I accept to that motion? <coughs> Is there any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Chief. This was this was this was the clearest, I think, explanation of of where we are that I've seen in a long time. Thank you for taking the time. I don't know how the hell you did it one day. No, and we got a great team. That's what it is. Myself and the two deputies. Thanks, thanks, mm -hmm. Steph. I appreciate that uh, <clears throat> that contribution. Uh, there's no question that this is all about providing quality customer service for our residents. So when the when the call comes in. If we don't have apparatus that could respond, I mean, you know, you reported today uh, that we had 174 calls where ambulances only responded. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those required only an ambulance, and others we didn't have an apparatus to re respond. Is, am I correct? Uh, not necessarily in that stat. No, I, I can run another stat for you and tell you which which uh, we haven't done in some time. We, we can look at it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And just one other thing on this topic. I, I um, am, I've sort of mentioned this multiple times, but there are other departments that have um, uh, where there's been some kind of policy or um, like replacement uh, recommendations in terms of looking at the age and when we should start um, looking to order or replace so that we're we're not constantly looking at 19, 16 19 year old mm -hmm. um apparatus and i think some of that has to do with you know when do you move it out of regular service and use it as a backup and then when do you move it out of your fleet altogether so i i think that's something that we should put together at some point and have the commission vote on it and share it with the board of finance so they understand um you know uh that there, we should have a plan for replacement and um and then even making suggestions for the financing of it in terms of you know m money revenue from the fire department maybe should be put aside to help support the cost of the fire department um which is done in many other towns i know there's been talk that you oh, it, it never works that way but it does work in other towns that that money goes in an account to help uh, finance the, um, the, the the cost of equipment for the fire department, which is expensive. So uh, that's been an uphill battle. I mean, uh, the chief reported the division the, uh, the fire fee six hundred seventy thousand for the year with uh, a budget in the amount of what five hundred thousand uh, thereabouts uh, plus eighty five thousand year to date in in, uh, in, in in those fees. So uh, it's been an uphill battle uh, trying to convince the board of finance to. Um, allocate those monies to the fire department. Um, uh, you know, I think we can keep on trying. And I think if we have something in a written document that we can pass on and just continue to hammer at home, eventually yeah. maybe we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Commissioner, I just want to, you know, point something out that we've been talking about. If you look at the month of June, for that, that calendar I, I provided to you. Out of service? Yeah, if you just take, let's say, you know, one of the things I'm looking at is like June 22nd to June 26th. Uh, you can see there that period of time we had three different engines out of service. Uh, we were left with only four engines. Um, I, I really want you to keep that number in mind as we as we move forward through some other discussions, talking about how many apparatus it takes to even combat a house fire. Uh, you, you need four engines just for a house fire. Assuming all four of those are available and are dispatched, we we really run lean. I mean, to have only four engines available in the entire town is is pretty lean. Yeah. If I'm reading this right, I mean, I'm looking at May, June, and July. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've referenced before how almost we, every month. we come almost close every, to shutting down a fire station. Almost every month we, we, we only have four apparatus mm -hmm. that are available. Um, listen, I, you know, we, we do so much with, with so little. And, and, and I think the perception or, or uh, this town has always uh, worked on the premise that you do the best that you can do with the apparatus and the personnel that you have and if and if you can't respond you can't respond but who who is detrimentally affected and certainly our residents whether it be medical uh, or fire uh, um, calls and our fire calls are up yeah. um, and certainly our medical calls are up so it's up to the residents of this town as to whether or not they will 
support the fire department and look at the upcoming budget sessions. Uh, the chief, uh, during his presentation, and it, it's going to be upon us pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're already uh, just about in September. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have the workshop in January. Uh, it's only a few months away. We need to start talking about, as a town and residents of this town, do you want the fire department to provide the quality customer service that you expect? And the only way that that's going to happen is if the residents put pressure on the Board of Finance, they go to the meetings and they request um, the financing of the fire department to provide public safety. Uh, it's as simple as that. We, as commissioners, could send letters, we can talk about what we need, we can talk about how our apparatus isn't working, uh, we can talk about the, the manpower that's necessary to fight a single uh, a family home, which is 17 or 20 firefighters, and we only have 11 or 12 on a shift. Um, you know, we just don't have the personnel, we don't have the equipment to do so. So if it's okay with the residents of this town, then it's okay. Um, it's not okay with us. I think our commitment as elected officials, as, as the Board of Finance, is to provide the best possible service for our residents as we possibly can. And the only way we can do that is with the allocation of monies through budget in order to purchase the equipment and to hire the manpower to do so. So um, I'm hopeful that the residents will uh, see this video and uh, speak up at the uh, next board of uh, uh, finance meetings as they begin to take place and certainly as the budget begins to develop uh, for this 2024 uh, budget uh, year, um, they'll support the uh, fire department as it should be supported. Thank you. Um, any other questions regarding all business of the department? Paul, is the chief of the engine that was in the accident, is that back? It's back. Yep, came back six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah, close. In the, the, the area, wasn't there an aerial mm. truck that? Yep, that's back. Okay. Yep. Was that the, the T1 that was out for, okay. Mm -hmm. New business of the department, chief. Uh, new business, the one thing I wanted to make sure the commission was aware of was following up on an email that I had sent regarding the website. Um, I'm really hoping I, a commissioner or two might be interested in helping to kind of oversee that. There's always a lot of questions about the website, and so I think it's a great opportunity to have your hand right in it. I volunteer. All right. Pat, thank you so and much. For, for, I was hopeful that you were going to do so. Can I, I pass out sure. where I started? Yeah, yeah. I was thrilled, Chief. Thank you for the you comparison you? from other departments, both yep. fire and police, mm -hmm. as to what their websites, how they look like, and um, and how ours could be improved. Uh, I didn't know you had this going to be here. So I will share. We, got we, have, we have an extra. There you go, Deputy. So I'm very interested in this because I have worked on websites on the West and East Coast at universities, never having done uh, a fire department. Can't be so any different. I went online to find out how you create the perfect fire department's website mm -hmm. and the categories of information listed, uh, such as contact information everywhere so it's easy for someone looking at the website to find out how to get to somebody that needs uh, to solve the problem. Links to emergency services, fire prevention tips and tool tools, donation and support invitations. And that reminds me, do, you get, do we get donations from people? Not particularly. If we do, we typically so. provide them to the volunteers. So if we did get a donation from some wealthy person, would that go into our funds? Ooh, that's why it usually goes to the volunteers. Just to, to, yeah, only yep. to We should direct it to them. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Cool. Social media links, a touch of personality, which I really like, which includes photographs, um, and, and some personal interest stories. Of, we have five, six new uh, firefighters and each of them has a different story that would be kind of nice to talk about. 
So in, uh, on this first part of the handout, there there is a company that does mm -hmm. websites. So they provided the information. And I left it on, not as an ad, but just to know if anybody wanted to look sure. further into this program. The second handout has to do with the importance of a modern website. And the items identified are emergency alert notifications, fire prevention and safety information, a memorial area, online fire permitting system, public event calendar, volunteer recruitment, online reporting system, and definitely facts, um, questions and answers, and contact information. And as you were talking about getting the word out to the public, we could do a survey on this website asking how people felt about not having new engines to put out fires. But sure. Possibly. So I had um, talked with Yvonne last week about photos. I know there are photos that are taken at the swearing-in ceremonies. It would be nice to have some of those on the website. I just think a lot of photos would, would make it you know, more personal. I looked at the Enfield fire site. It has a lot of what um, is in the information I just passed out. Um, I thought maybe there could be short bios on the commissioners. Sure. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Write your short bio. Um, budget. I noticed Enfield had the budget listed. Um, they had a roster that included name, rank, and staff position, photos, and um, public record request. So all of those things are on this site, and there are similar kinds of information on the North Haven site. Um, so I just, I would be very happy to work with whoever is going to be doing the website. Great. I'm glad I'll, I'll put you in touch directly with the developer. Um, so uh, Enfield stole my idea. Uh, this, if you look at who's hosting their website, it's who's hosting our website right now. The difference is uh, I provided that to them probably two years ago and they, um, they have a, a more modern version because it's been done more recently. Yeah. And so uh, we we're still going to use, we, we have a website purchased. It's already all taken care of. Uh, I already have a photographer who can come in and do all the photos. Oh, nice. um, but if you want to work with the developer on the content and the visuals and how it's laid out, uh, I'd be more than happy to put you in touch and, and uh, work on it with you. Sure. And, and how much time do I get? <laughs> uh, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Pat, thank well, you very it doesn't much happen for, overnight. No, 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 no. But thank you very much for, for being willing to take on no, this task. No. I, I think, Jen, you spoke about this probably a year or two ago, and how important it would be to have a website, and uh, certainly an up-to-date website. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think this will be a, a wonderful project for us to, to to embark upon and then implement. And I, I think you're right. I think we have a lot of uh, wonderful things that we could articulate in that website. For instance, we hired our first female firefighter. Right? I know. I mean, how, how exciting uh, is that to showcase our first female firefighter? Now, I think we need to get permission from uh, each of those persons, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and they might not want the notoriety, if you will. Uh, but again, I think that would be something that we, in fact, could include uh, with with their permission. Uh, but thank you again for stepping up on uh, to to take on this uh, this uh, task. Um, anything else, Chief, for new business? New business? No, nothing. All right. Good in the fire department. Uh, good to the department. I had a couple of motions for this evening uh, that we can we can do now if you'd like. Uh, these are typical um, firefighter upgrades that are outlined in the, in the, uh, the labor contract. Uh, Commissioner Amalgam. I make a motion to elevate firefighter Mark Santor to grade A, effective <coughs> August 1st, 2023. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. Is there any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. I make a motion to elevate firefighter Gary Mack to grade A, effective September 3rd, 2023. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. A question down motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. 
Where's your bro? I make a motion to elevate firefighters Ben Despoto, Paul Nguyen, Sarah Pucci, and Raul Sedano to grade B, effective August 6, 2023. Do I hear a second to the motion? Second. Is there any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you very much. Any uh, other um, good of the, the department chief? Nothing further to add, no. Okay. Um, just one thing, um, there was a wonderful ceremony on the North Haven Green, and Chief, thank you very much for being one of the spokespersons uh, for the fire department uh, to honor our fallen firefighter and uh, uh, police officer from, from New Britain. Uh, the Knights of Columbus did a marvelous job in orchestrating that and dedicating uh, two beautiful benches uh, in our gazebo in the honor of our firefighter and, uh, uh, and police officer. Um, the family members were, uh, each of those families were there and represented. Uh, and it was uh, just a, a wonderful uh, 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 ceremony. So again, Chief, thank you for your beautiful words uh, that you presented um, uh, that particular day. Um, I see there's no one here for public comments. Chairman, one more thing, if I can, please. Yes, sure. I've just been researching a question that Commissioner Caldwell had asked regarding the, the budget. So on the maintenance and repair, uh, it looks like there are, so uh, most of the repairs that are done on the apparatus is a, is done through a bid. And so it's 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 guaranteed pricing. And so there was a $50,000 PO taken out on July 18th that we anticipate working off of that existing PO for a number of repairs moving into the future. There is also, uh, it looks like nine months worth of the lease for the apparatus, mm -hmm. which we are paying for $3,000 a month because we're so short on apparatus. Uh, so that was $18,000. So that's $68,000 right there of that line. So didn't want uh, that answer to go uh, without some clarification. So the, the PO, they just pull it out of they the pull PO. It out, and then, and we, then we when, bill as you it. use it, you bill against yep. it. Okay. Thanks for that explanation, uh, Chief. And, and, and Jen, does that answer your yep. question? Yep. Good, good, thank you. Um, obviously, no public comments. Um, I'll entertain a, a, a motion to adjourn into executive session. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the Town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.